what you do? That's a clown question, bro. What? Hey, you shut up over there. I was talking what what would you say you do here to her <laughs> head butt. Head butt. are you head trying butt. to kiss her or what try to headbutt her mm -hmm. where's my gun Torito, ah, what the fuck <laughs> scared the shit out of me god damn it what is, I was like what is that green pepper oh ah, what the fuck was that <laughs> <laughs> God never, damn it! I've never seen oh a person. God, don't scream! Jesus fuck! Uh, I've never seen someone that's so scared of people touching. <laughs> he plays <laughs> VR. Oh, what's going on? Who touched me? <laughs> ah! Shit, nigga, what was that? Hey, <laughs> hey, hey! Stop it! I like the spider shit. This hurt my eyes. Nerd confessions. Incoming transmission. Accessing database. Identification acquired. Welcome back, user. Nerd confessions will begin in five, four, three, two, one. Hey everybody, welcome back to Nerd Confessions, our safe haven where we discuss our thoughts and opinions on everything nerdy, geeky, techy, and whatever. It's been a week since our last confession, but before we jump right into it, we'd like to remind our listeners that you can follow us on various social media platforms and find previous episodes and bonus content on our website, nerdconfessions.net. I'm Sohil, your moderator for this episode, and I'm joined by Ellie. Hi. Tommy. Hello. And William. Hi. Hi. In this episode, we'll be talking about our five most recent nerd topics, uh, news topics actually, important to us. One of the most interesting VR PlayStation titles, Farpoint, its aim controller, and we'll finally discuss Alien Covenant. Alien Stick Covenant. around until the end of the episode to hear some of our listeners' confessions. If you want to send us confessions, you can email us at contact at nerdconfessions.net or send us a tweet. We love tweets. Tweet, tweet. For starters, let's see what everyone's been up to this week. William? What have you been up to? <clears throat> I played some Firepoint um, and some Firepoint with you. I watched Alien Covenant, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And I made my own Sonic Amiibo. Okay, show right it Right here. And it's on his foot. Um, show I made, the cameras. I, cust I, custom made the, I custom made the chip, and then I glued it to his foot. I mean, I used much more glue than I anticipated. But Ellie's asking me, does it work? Does it work after I put all that glue on it? So here's Amiibo. <laughs> I'm going to put it on his foot. Does it work? Yep. See right there? I named I mean, it Sonic, Sonic 25th. It worked. Sonic 25th. It worked. Why 25th? Because it's the 25th anniversary Sonic plush. But, but Why, uh, such a name. So how did you make his red foot look like a pepperoni? Uh, I, I bought a felt <laughs> circle <laughs> and I bought felt glue. Wait, and I was really worried it, it was going to stick or not, and I ended up putting too much. <laughs> Why don't you unstitch his foot it's and put it inside his foot? I don't want it. Glue. No. The thing is, you don't want it to bend, right? So I want oh. it to be hard. So it hardened. So it's actually good because it doesn't bend at all. So it won't bend the chip. Yeah, you're right. And yeah, did you put job. identical felt on the other foot just to make it match? No. I don't care about that. Wow. You should write Andy on there. That's Andy. actually pretty cool. That's an awesome little uh, game thing you made. So it works just like the regular Sonic Amiibo that you could buy. Yeah. And I like classic Sonic. I don't like the new Sonic. So this Sonic is a classic one. So I'm kind of proud of it. I like it. A little shorter, right? I'll actually use him. Yeah, he's got shorter legs. He's like got a little bit more cutesy face. I but like he's him. not so. He's not that light blue, is he? Um, no. This this is just version of him is a little bit more light blue. All right. He's a little. It's shiny. like a shiny version of Sonic. I like it, but still classic Sonic. So I like it. All right, all right, all right. So Ellie, what have you been up to? I played Breath of the Wild. Ooh. How far Still have you got now? Not very far. I like exploring and collecting grasshoppers and 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 collecting apples. What are you doing with grasshoppers? Are you collecting just them. just collecting for fun? I just like chopping. You just grass like having tons, and then they come out, and you collect them. I like chopping grass, too. and then you fall asleep, but then you're long. <laughs> yeah, then you put you, you, you boot up, chop down some grass, and fall asleep, right? Yeah, pretty much <laughs> is what happens. I can't get to a main like mission or stuff because I fall asleep before I get there. All of a sudden, you wake up with a switch on top it's of your chest. It's just so relaxing. Like, the music they have in it, like... Choo, 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 choo. 
Yeah, the I know what you're, oh, talking, you're, ta- you're talking about. Yeah, the, the little stables and stuff. And like, yeah, the stables uh, and stuff. Like, oh no, that, that's Kirk Village, villages. Yeah, yeah. Kirk yeah. Village's song. So it's relaxing. As long as you relax and you wake up feeling refreshed. No, I'm that. like crap. I didn't. I didn't go in my pajamas. I'm like <laughs> your pajamas. <laughs> my pajamas. What part of the country are you from? <laughs> <laughs> South the, America. The, <laughs> in the United States. <laughs> I'm from the California Republic, which used to be called Mexico. Oh, um, yeah, and I watched that Alien movie. What's it, la- what's it called? Alien. Covenant. Covenant. That's stupid. The Covenant reminds me of like, an, like a Vampire? witch. Like a witch coven. Well, as long as it reminds you of that, but I don't, what stupid. Are, let's be reminded of what Tommy did this week. What Nothing. you do this week. <clears throat> this week, I... <laughs> Just wake up. <laughs> I uh, started watching Grand Tour on Amazon. Uh, it's fucking amazing. I also continue watching Attack on Titan Season 2 and holy shit. Is it getting intense? Uh, continue watching Hero Academia, Dragon Ball Super, and I have been reading the fairy tale manga, which is apparently ending in 10 chapters. Fuck my life. So that's all I did. You don't like to read? I do. It's just it's ending. That's okay. I hate when it ends. Everything needs to end, right? Uh, yeah, sure. Endings are good. All right, so we already went over what William Will did, right? That'd be you. That's me now. So I did Farpoint with William. Yeah. Oh. We played oh, together. We went and we played co-op, actually. We'll see some footage of that later. Well, they co-opted, too. You touched my farpoint. <gasps> you touched what? We touched uh, aim controllers. Oh. Okay. Yes, we did, actually. Hey, Tommy, um, you have good hair today. Just saying. Thanks, man. Okay. I also watched uh, Kimmy Schmidt Season 3, and I started playing Horizon zero done cool. so i actually enjoy the, Kimmy the game Schmidt. Did season, you like three. season three season three is it, it seems like as it continues to go it starts to lose the magic that was season one mm, season yeah. one was magic Se- and then season, season two, two was okay but not like better but and no. then season three seems to be losing it because all the characters continue to be like Same. so stupid <laughs> like, why is it they don't awesome? develop anything well i don't know yet i haven't watched it all so we'll see what happens mm. i've watched three episodes so far of that season so it should be getting better and horizon horizon's actually really good yeah i know i got really like attached to it when i started playing but then breath of the wild happened. strength the story the story's good and also <clears> all <throat> the it's it's quite linear though yeah so far very it's linear. like you follow this path, then do this, then do this. Well, it has where it opens up, but the map's not that big, especially not compared to Breath of the Wild. Well, it didn't. It isn't. It looks really good. It kind of reminds me a lot of. Um, I want to say like the scenery kind of feels like Last of Us looking when you walk around the buildings. A little bit, but it wasn't that much like Last of Us, but it looked like it. It is post apocalyptic, so. Yeah, it was pretty cool though. I quite enjoyed it. I haven't beat it yet, so don't tell me the ending, but I really think it feels it's really fun so far. All right, so with all that said, and we're doing all our stuff for this week, let's get into the weekly news. News of the week. <laughs> Looks like Instagram is looking to stay on top as the most used social media platform. They have started having face-like filters like Snapchat, apparently. So looks like they decided that they want to stay as the number one, which they are number one right now, most used um, social around media platform. Around the world. More than Facebook? Yeah, around the world. More than Facebook. Around the world. Um, Facebook's a close second. I think Snapchat's like third or fourth. Ellie, why do you look like and some And Twitter's shady? like fifth. Like what? Why do you look like some shady right now? Oh, there she is. Hi, Ellie. So uh, it looks like they're trying to put like these little you know fun filters Please on the up. on the screens. Uh, I don't understand why they would why it, it needs to be done. I think Snap Instagram is already on top and it's already being used by many people because they're trying to kill it. A lot of people are enjoying those filters and things and putting them on Instagram. I've actually like if you go on Instagram, a lot of people are using yeah, those lot. filters. So why not just integrate it natively? So that's what they're probably this is a frame of mo- thought. No, okay. that. so that's that's interesting. I think that's cool, but I don't think. Um, look uh, at that dumb bunny. Yeah, <laughs> it's I, like a knockoff of that dog. Yeah, it's a, well the bunny's a knockoff. It's always these little crowns and all that stuff, and the nerd thing with the they braces. look bad. I'm telling you right now, they yeah, look bad. Horrible. But uh, what what you know they have all the same things: nerd glasses, bunny, dog, all that stuff. But I mean, what's the point? You, at the end of the day. The social long, media. Hey, look, as long as people use it, yeah. they have a purpose. I, I know Instagram was just noted as the most socially harmful social media. 
but that was because because people call um from what i was reading online is that most people look at instagram and see people's perceived life not their real life so when the people put post post the good stuff yeah you post a picture of you climbing a mountain and then your fist in the air uh you don't really climb mountains every day Mm -mm. so why are you putting a pic then that is that a picture people just save up good pictures and post only the good ones yeah when or the time comes, when you when you're in, uh, let's say, Instagram, keep a backlog you have like eight thousand pictures. pictures of you just Lit. bored, stuck in traffic, feeling sick, laying on a sofa, paying your bills. That'd be a story yeah, having there. crap, you so, know, food. So but on Instagram, everything's great. And so what happens and is because and sunglasses and clothes and all sorts of nice speech stuff, right? Because kids kids around like under eighteen don't understand the perceived reality and the reality that is real. So people will see adult like. 18 year olds maybe like 25 year olds like going around the world and like i'm in japan they think they're always in japan some people think True. they're always tra- traveling but they're not really traveling all the time they just see pictures from their five travels from like the last 10 years and they put it up every you know five or six days they're putting another picture up that they had mm-hmm. is that what they do yeah yep. Man. so people will seem like they're traveling and stuff but that's their perceived life not their real life but anyway they're copying but snapchat I mean, so, so some people some people do put like serious um, stuff and they're the ones not really noticed. I'm tired of all the fucking yeah. but messages. People put like those little pictures of like war- like a like, whole paragraph of like some positive. I just shit. feel like with Instagram trying to be more like Snapchat, they're losing that charm I thought they had. Instagram was supposed to be kind of the photo um, sharing. Yeah, it's supposed to be like photo sharing and cool, but I think that people love Snapchat to the point where they want these photo filters, and Snapchat is quickly becoming like a. Hi, it's more used than Twitter now, so that's probably why it's not there. But I don't care about these photo filters, and I'm done with Instagrams. S- news topic of the week number two: Tom Hardy is to star in Venom. Looks like Sony is trying to push out a Venom movie really quickly, and already have a release date for October fifth, yes. twenty eighteen. He's gonna play Eddie Brock. But yeah. why Sony? Why can't it be Marvel? Well, Sony's, so mad. Sony still owns the rights to both of Star, I mean Spider-Man and Venom, I believe. I know but they're just they just allowing Marvel like a partnership to, partnership for Marvel to do Spider-Man, but it's so dumb. So what they're they, just gonna mess it up? I know it. I think what they did with Spider-Man is they they allowed Marvel to make the movie as long as Sony gets to distribute. So that's what they should have done with this. That and also just so they can they can do well when they take out Venom. If this if fails, it's going to tarnish Venom even more than Spider Man Three did. Right. <laughs> but ta- I'm, I'm, I'm a little Spider-Man afraid did. because you know um, Tom Hardy already plays a DC character. He plays um, Bane. So he was Bane in the. No, that doesn't count anymore. That I'm was, just saying that he was a played. He universe. played ben, I mean, he played Bane. I'm just saying he played another character. I don't know. I mean, he did pretty well then, so I'm sure he can do. He pretty can well. You can do here. good, but I don't think that I don't think that Sony has the right. I hopefully Sony has the right idea when they do this because they should research the character because you know Venom is not what they made Venom to be in the Spider-Man Three movie they put out, and that was like a really awkward, weird spy- Venom to I see. I hate it when they put characters that. Are like the, how always have their face covered, or usually have their face covered in movies, because they always find an excuse to reel back that face and just have the actual actor's face, because they don't want to uh, spend money on it, or I don't know what it is. You can relate more to act the actual face, but Venom was supposed to mostly be his face, and this guy, like every chance he got, would have the face revealed in his costume in Spider-Man Three. Yeah, you're probably right. It's probably super expensive to do his face. It's like yeah. so all. There's teeth. only like one or two, like th- few second scenes that he had the, the face covered and the, like the fangs out. I don't think he even had the tongue ever. Uh, I don't, I, 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 honestly, I only watched half that movie and I quit, so <laughs> I, don't, I don't even want to talk about that movie. But I hopefully that Sony does its justice and maybe they allow Marvel to take over and let Sony distribute. But if what they really need to do is, I think they're trying to put a movie out before the rights get destroyed. So he's like, I need to put a movie out so I don't lose my rights to Marvel because you have to put a movie out to keep your rights. Right. So, all right. Like Fantastic Oh, Four. my God. All right. I'm looking at it. It looks so bad. What does? He's looking at the... Go to, th- go to Google. Just, just people have to say Oh, this. you're talking... Go ta- to Google. Th- type Spider-Man we all, 3. We all, well, I know no, what just Spider-Man look at 3. Our, no, just look at it right now. Oh, just just look at it. I know what it looks like. No, just look at it. Just look at it. It's not like uh, we haven't seen it, but I know. Just, just it's been a while. Look at, it. just click images. I've seen it already. God, it's so bad. 
When they tried, that Spider Man is Venom. This is a goddamn play though. It's not bad for its time. It's not bad like... for its time, but it's not like great. I mean that's I mean that's not that's that's what that's I That's what usually that's you what usually saw his face, yeah. Like that. And yeah. and to make up for the fact that you usually saw his face, they gave him fangs, which never happened at all. Yeah, <laughs> in the, in he the show, personally, in bro- comics. Eddie Brock never had fangs. No, it Eddie, was all Venom. Yeah, Venom had the fangs, and what another thing is is that Eddie Brock was not that thin. So I'm done. With this yeah, section. exactly. It was it was bad. But uh, I, I, Venom's one of my favorite characters. I'm kind of hoping it's good, but it's Sony. So I don't have my hopes up. It's more than a year and a half out, so I think they're gonna. They already started filming or starting to start filming, so we'll see what happens as it goes along. Some internet gaming currency speculation is happening, and looks like the WoW token, which is currency of the World of Warcraft, is purchasable with real, which is purchasable with uh, real money, has tripled in value. The main reason being that Destiny Two is launching. So, so I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing because tripling in price. Does that does that mean they're anticipating for Battle.net to be more popular popular or is it based on user po- popularity? I'm not sure how that works. <coughs> I th- so basically the concept of the tokens right now is you you get you can buy tokens with in game gold. Right. But and then with the tokens you can spend it on playtime. So you don't have to pay actual dollars like a subscription. So, like, for example, if you made enough money, let's say you're a guild owner, and you have, like, a 200 people in your guild, and you're getting residual gold, you could just take that every month and just buy Wildcoin and never pay. Making it more expensive to buy. Either either too many people are buying it. Or is it that there's speculation on the market? Like, people are saying that I have tokens, I want to sell them. So the, the price does the, go up no, based on the, how many people are buying it? The price is set by Blizzard. Like d- even if however much so is we Blizzard buy, being dicks, then it's like we're going to be much more popular when Destiny Two comes out, so we're going to raise prices now. Why would they be more popular? No, but it doesn't benefit because it's on. Well, Battle I mean, it does benefit, them, but not benefit. Them it's going to release time. on PC too. Destiny Two is going to be on PC as well what on Battlenet. What does that have to do with? Because see, if or they're trying to make more people, if Destiny Two is coming on Battlenet, then they're going to probably try to make it so some WoW players go to Destiny Two. Because by making it more expensive to get a WoW token, you're not going to be able to play as much. You'd have it would cost you more to fork up. To oh, that's be able true. To play. It could be like a way to maybe it's going to play a role in Destiny as well. Maybe you're going to be able to use that to it. buy like the Doubt skins it. and stuff. I could don't be. know. They, I don't know. I think it's just a w- method to get people Cause to stop because they probably realize like by doing that, they've lost a lot of people subscribing because people just play with in-game gold. They have some in game purchases. Hardcore gamers. Oh, they have some in game purchases for Destiny. Yeah, like so, moves and Yeah, stuff like dances like that. and stuff, so maybe yeah, I mean you're always gonna get those, yeah. Maybe they're like saying that because so many people are gonna be using it and they'll be able to chat with other people, they'll say like, Oh, you can use the tokens to buy like um all kinds of stuff like Will said, so I think that's probably why, but we'll see what happens. I still can't believe it's coming to battle now though, that's crazy. All yeah. right. Talking about Destiny 2, let's watch the trailer. Oh, trailer's here. Thing I'll do all day. So it's got a lot more character interaction. At least it looks like it will. Uh oh, there's an attack coming. Everyone with me now. What happened? There's an attack coming. It looks like the. Uh, it's w- the Cabal. Yeah. And it was a big Cabal guy. So the question here is, did they lead up to this at the end of the Destiny 1? The, they did not. So this is just a storyline that they put out now. Yeah, I mean, but you can say there is a lot of character building for this. I mean, in the DLC for all Destiny 1, we got to see a lot more Cade, especially with the Taken King. But so, right. Taken King had a lot of Cade. Very attack the turtle people. Yeah, this is the first time we really like is based around the Cabal, so it's kind of cool that we're actually finally doing something with them because they're really cool. Yeah, the Cabal remind me of a lot of uh, yeah. So this trail actually reveals gameplay. We got a teaser already, so we get to see kind of some of the gameplay. You can see some of the guns. Is a tank? You can now? drive tanks supposedly. Yeah, yeah, let's drive around tanks. 
I show you some of the exotic guns, some of the new. I don't know if that's a cutscene or can actually attack other ships. But they're showing a new guardian, uh, a new uh, titan ability. It's like a shield that you throw out in front of you. There's like a staff of the rogues right here. You can see the staff. Um, exotic rocket launcher, exotic gatling gun. It looks like another space like the vault you would have with the. With the am I right? Am I right or am I right? <laughs> Is there gonna do you, um this is not gonna be supported for PlayStation 3 or PlayStation or no, Xbox, right? It's only on next gen consoles and PC. So that's why it's gonna be even better, probably. Yeah, hopefully. None of this weird six player teams where you can't see the sun. Well, they did say you can't see the sun. They're gonna reduce multiplayer to four versus four. I don't know why. Maybe it's because they have the big vehicles now or something. Could I be. don't know what it what, is. But how about the raids and stuff? Not six? Raids they haven't I, I don't know. They haven't said anything to that I'm aware of yet. Well, I but think remember when you were playing on the Destiny One, and everything was like indoors pretty much, and like you're in caves most of the yeah, time. Yeah, it was like to optimize. Yeah, so yeah. the old PlayStation Three players could play with you. Yeah, it's also I think it's partially so they have <laughs> is like, that way. I think, I think it's so. also so they can have tight controls over stuff. But yeah, it seemed like it also is mainly just so you can handle so many play, 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 play people in one place and enemies in one place. Right, so you don't get like random interactions. But well, that's pretty cool. Um, I know that you're excited, William, and I know that. I also know that Ellie is excited for this. Aliens. Mm -hmm. So, this is their game. They love this, and I know they get put many, many hours. I know Will put in several. What is it? I'm Decades. A, several weeks into oh, Ellie, have, at least you, like two, three months. <laughs> two, three, you have the platinum. I put right? two, three months in the time. <laughs> two, three months. Of, two, three months of Destiny One, and Ellie did two. So I think Ellie did one month. One month that's of what? Destiny. I think I put in like like play one? play time two yeah. weeks or something into it and I stopped. That's good it time. was it was it used to be my form of relaxation where I get to shoot things. That's a good thing to do though. Which <laughs> Breath of the Wild takes the place of now. Yeah, <laughs> mine was Ark, but you fall asleep with it, so this is no, different. No, well, yeah, I guess because Destiny, I had to like actually sit in front of my TV, but now the Switch gives me the ability to lay on my bed. And then the HD rumble it comes is nice. in and she puts that, it on her chest. The and falls ability asleep. to just go wherever. <laughs> <laughs> HD Massage rumble. my chest. Massage me to sleep. sleep. <sighs> so <laughs> as you, have you ever dropped it on your face? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that. I've done that before with my uh, iPhone. When you're like reading. Oh God, that yeah, hurts yeah, so yeah, much. Yeah. You drop your iPhone on your face. Yeah. Like, I, well, I yeah. Do. I, heard not, I hate you too. I've done it where you ever drop a TV on your face. You ever hold your TV? Stop. All right. So next piece of news. Ever woke up on the wrong side? <laughs> the toilet. <laughs> who would like to see Nathan Drake? Uh, haven't even actually, who yet. would you like to see as Nathan Drake? Looks like the movie is for Uncharted series is coming out. Right now, it looks like Spider-Man's Homecoming. Tom Holland is to play the young Nathan Drake in the Uncharted movie. What do you guys think? So yeah. I don't understand. Is this going to be... Is it going to be prequel to the games? It's a prequel based on a sequence from the third game. Okay. So, like, so it's going to be like young Indiana Jones. Nobody's going to care. Yeah. <laughs> I, might, I might like it. I don't know. It might be good. You never know because I... Well, it's not the TV show Young Indiana Jones. It's a movie Young Indiana Jones. So maybe, I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know what to expect out of this. Well, I'm excited. I mean, if, if it, you're trying to make an Nathan, an Uncharted movie, I'm, I'm interested. Why can't it be Nathan Fillion? Uh, Wait, what's uh, his name? Nathan Drake. Nathan Drake. Wait, uh, what's the that guy's name that does his voice? Oh, I don't know. I know you. I know who you're talking it's about. It's Batman. Uh, look him. Look him up. But uh, Nathan Fillion is the guy from Firefly. <laughs> Firefly is the guy that plays <laughs> Cade. Yeah, Cade. Uh, yeah, I don't know what his actor's name is, but he does the voice, and I, he looks similar to him. It could be like an I don't know, man. This photo, he looks like a cartoon character. He looks like a child. He looks. He looks a lot like. Um, what was the guy that did the first Spider-Man? Tommy McGuire. Tommy McGuire. You know how he had the boyish good looks. He has the boyish good looks, trying to look like a, like a little high school boy, just like Tommy McGuire uh, did back then. What? I'm just saying. That's why they hired him because he looks young. Well, it's probably that, and also he kind of looks like Nathan Drake, kind of a little bit. But we'll see what happens because I'm really excited for it. So hopefully they make a movie. Uh, Sony's going to be the one producing it, so let's see. Home, so hopefully Sony doesn't really destroy this either. Also, so yeah. <laughs> hopefully they. After don't. Venom, we'll see if we have, can put any faith into them. Well, we'll yeah, that's true. Well, 
Who would you want to see as the adult to Nathan Drake? Let us know on nerdconfessions.net or our Twitter, which is nerdconfessions with the zeros replacing the O's. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> so, topic of the week number one. We're going to get into that. Let's talk about it now. Topic of the week, Farpoint. So, Farpoint. Farpoint is the, uh, actually just released last week. Uh, I think it came out on Tuesday of last this week. Um, <coughs> Farpoint is a PlayStation VR first-person shooter developed by Impulse Gear, and it uses a new aim controller, which PlayStation uh, Sony actually released. It kind of looks like a move controller at the end of a, uh, I want to say, a D. Well, it looks similar. <laughs> it looks similar to Shape. plastic. The controller that we had for um, Far Cry. It's not Far Cry. Um, crap! What was that game? Oh, with the, my done God. by. Oh my God! Jesus Christ! It's the one with the Kill Zone. Kill Zone. Yes. It was a lot like the gun that was promoted and sold with Kill Zone Three, because Kill Zone Three used the move controller, and that was basically just putting the controller on the end of the little gun peripheral. <laughs> device and and this is a lot like that but it's all one piece it's all actually a controller and the buttons are built in and it, it resembles a whole controller you have all the buttons that you'd have a normal controller they're all mapped and kind of placed in a way that can use it as a normal controller if you really wanted to yeah um and you don't need to like remove the move t- like you used to have to remove the move controller and put the remove controller back on yeah which is really stupid but that's what happened but um I like the gun. I think the controller feels great, personally. Yeah, um, it feels really comfortable. I don't, I don't see a problem with it whatsoever. And the controller is easy with your thumbs. They're not as like, it's smart. Like it's in a good spot. Yeah, yeah. I think all the button placements are right what they need to be. I think. Um, and they, they took. I was really when we played we, when we we're at PSX, we interviewed them and we um, got to try it out and. When I was trying it out, I was kind of complaining. I want to be able to kind of turn around. Oh, yeah. Did they disable that? So I think it was disabled there. I think they did have the feature, but they were scared to turn it on for you when you could use the second stick to turn yourself like you would in um, Resident Evil 7. But the maps are so linear. All you, have, all you really need to do is go back and forth. Right. You're then pretty move much side to side. You don't really need to turn to around. Straight. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not 100% needed that you would need to do that because they built the levels around that. So, it's not something you need to do, but I like the ability to do that. I feel so restricted without being able to turn around. So, the ability, the fact that they put it actually in there for you and you can turn it on, have smooth turning or interval turning like you would have in any other VR game that you move around with the stick. I'm happy they added that in there. Yeah, and I think they allowed uh, us to have, um, you know, degree turning which is i use and he uses smooth will uses smooth yeah and uh which means with degree it cuts you to the next spot yeah so you don't get sick from the motion yeah it's kind of like a direct i think i didn't feel sick uh i just felt like really you know the vr headset one thing i it happens in every game i play with vr you get a little sweaty yeah it just gets annoying but it's just it's it um anyway the move controller is really well made uh the game it looks like they put a lot of um, focus into putting the move controller together and the game Scenery. itself. The aim controller? Yeah, and the aim controller together. And I think that's what is perfect. It's really great about this game. I, the only thing I think that they didn't really put in is, like, it's quite repetitive. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's about it. But what do you expect from a first-person shooter? I really hate the spiders. So, um, personal preference. well, I think the game setting was kind of cool where you had the desert planet kind of a thing it reminded me a lot of star uh starship troopers mm-hmm. when they were on the bug planet and you had like the little holes that the bugs can come out of and stuff like that but you find out there more there's more to the area that you land than just bugs that you fight yeah i mean you're gonna see some in the video if you're watching our youtube page some of the extra characters uh at different enemies you get uh in this game but you see some of the you know he's talking about insects and crabs there's some yeah, those are kind of the starting point yeah intro and that's what, what the only enemies that we got to fight at psx when we tried it out and then you got an intro to a boss character at the psx yeah and which then, is a giant bug yeah giant bug and uh, but there's more a lot more enemies than just the bugs and that turn out in the game i mean there so like there's what looks like 
head crabs that, yeah you hit from half-life that crawl around sort yep. of but they don't actually do anything like a head crab would and then you get like acid spitting bugs that look very much like the starship trooper bugs um yeah and then you get like bubble spitting bugs that like the bubble explodes and, and goes does splash damage but it's, so you have to kill them before they shoot their bubbles at you um and then ellie would like this you see actual aliens Ooh. that like talk and grunt and stuff <laughs> they just they just make like weird sounds <laughs> <laughs> not like that kind of like that sounds like a unicorn <laughs> yeah that's pretty much what it sounds <laughs> like. a little more similar. that's exactly what they sound like really no, uh, it's a good diet like that so they make that noise and they run around and it sounds like they're everywhere around you when you wear the headphones. Yeah, the 3D sound isn't that good for them. Yeah, <laughs> they're like everywhere around you, but like they sound like behind you, but they're not. Uh, but they do fight back. Um, the AI in this game is not that bright. Um, they do like that thing is hard to kill, but um, the AI is not that that bright. But what they use in this game is um, overwhelming like overwhelming you with a lot of things on the screen yeah and you, it's kind of difficult because in a first person shooter you really have the ability to turn really fast and you know look around but you can't do that in this game because you're gonna get sick so uh oh, i just got healed so you kind of like forget where you are in your settings and you have to use teamwork in this version the co-op in, in co-op yeah but what? in the first person you don't really need to in right story game. story mode um, sorry. There's there's two more enemies that we didn't talk about. Flying little robots that like shoot rockets and sh- stuff at you, mm-hmm. and then large walkers and dropships. Go ahead, Ellie. I have a question. Yes. I haven't played the V. Uh, obviously, I haven't played it with the VR and anything. I like based on what I'm looking at. Is it the is it is it a lot more immersive when you're playing with the VR, or is this? Wait, didn't you try it at the uh, PS6? Yeah, I know, but that was just a snippet. Like that it's the same thing. Weird. Honestly, I think it it felt it feels more immersive than when you're watching the video because your the gun is in your hand, and the feeling of the gun in your hand feels it feels good. I don't know, it just feels normal. Yeah, know. it feels good to me. I don't know for some reason it just doesn't look as pretty. It's not pretty. Uh, it feels. It looks a lot different when you have the headset on. It on does. The, when it you have looks the a whole lot VR different. headset on, it looks better. I think. It looks um, more alive. Plus, the when you get the holographic uh, aiming sight, it really looks feels good in the VR s- system because it's like you're actually actually aiming. And sometimes when I you know make a mistake at aiming stuff, and when I u- use a gun normally mm-hmm. in real life, when, I, when I'm aiming a gun, I'll close my eye. You're not supposed to do that. In this, I'll do it too because I feel like it'll help me aim better, but it doesn't. So <laughs> it's really funny. And what you're watching is not the full point of view that you'd see in the headset because what you're looking at, if you're looking at the YouTube, um, is kind of like a small compressed version of what you see in the headset. So they don't want to take up the resources to have the second screen. So it's like a lower resolution and just a portion of what you'd see in the headset so see. looking at this is not an accurate representation it's it like gives you a good glasses I- it gives you a good idea but it's not an accurate accurate representation to what you'd see in the headset yeah exactly I um see. but uh one thing that happens in the it kind of follows fall apart for far point follows the halo idea of having two weapons at once you only get one gun and a side gun you don't really get to dual wield in this game as far as i know yeah and most guns have a secondary mode um uh, with them, and it's basically you have one gun, and you can carry one more on your back. Um, and several of the guns actually follow the same look and feel as Halo, like the weapon that's on being used on the YouTube video right now that we put together yesterday. Um, Will's using something that was kind of like the pulse rifle from Halo, and then um, I was earlier using uh, a needle or like gun called the Spiker, uh, which is exactly the same thing as the Needler. It just is a lot bigger of a needle than the small needles. Yeah, and, and you start with like some normal guns. You just have like an assault rifle, and then you have like an, a shotgun, and those have secondaries. It's like a rocket launcher for the assault rifle, and it's a grenade launcher for the shotgun. Right, which uh, Halo didn't have uh, those secondaries, but it did have um, a shotgun, and it did have an assault rifle, just like the one you have in your hand, and this also shot in three burst. Um, but one thing I was going to ask you guys, which I really want to know, is do you think the aim uh, aim controller, how well does it work, and does it have any problems that you guys can see or feel? Um, I think it feels really great. What the problem I have with it is when it's no longer tra- tracking properly. 
And we have I agree. a lot. I agree with Will. We have a lot of the problems with um, the move controllers not tracking properly. And for the most part, the, I mean, this seems to track a little bit better than the two move controllers do. Like Batman's hands were so jittery when I played Batman Arkham mm-hmm. um, VR. Okay. Um, so that I mean, it feels better than that as far as the smooth, how smooth it kind of moves around. So maybe they put some more motion motion center sensors in there, and maybe that's part of why that feels a little more smooth. But there is a problem where sometimes I'll, when you switch up to the secondary weapon, you kind of flip it over your shoulder, and then when you bring it back, sometimes the aiming will be like just slightly off from what you're used to, mm-hmm. um, and sometimes. Uh, it'll start to slowly get more and more off. So at one point I kind of in the PlayStation VR headset, you can kind of push out your headset so you can look around. Um, I, I pushed it out and my gun was aimed to the right and in the game was in, aimed to the left. So <laughs> I'd gotten like completely out and you can't really. So bas- basically it's not that exact. It'd be like if you're going to an arcade and it's on a joystick Hmm. So it's not like exactly to where you're aiming. It just is guessing. And since you're looking at the headset, you can kind of get a feel for where it is in the space to where you're looking. So the 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 spatial tracking system isn't as good as it should be. Not it's not still yeah. not like Vive. It's not like Oculus to where it'd be like pinpoint precise. It's a lot like um com- like to compare compare it in another VR game kind of situation. It'd be like comparing. Uh, PlayStation VR job simulator to Vive job simulator where your PlayStation VR simulator you have to calibrate it and it's a pain in the butt before you start it where with Vive you just boot it up and it's good to go. Yeah, and you randomly change heights like, you know, yeah. in the game, uh, with the PlayStation VR version. But I noticed the same situation when I was playing. Like I was trying to use the sights in the game because it's much more accurate than just, you know, blind firing into a corner. Right. Uh, but somehow my gun, I would have a problem and I'd have to take my gun and like jerk it to the right or to the left, and then that's the only way I could do it. And um, that wasn't really fun to do, but at the same time, I really enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed playing it, uh, and, but I like the gun. I think it's really well made, personally. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're looking for a shooter in VR, I would first say... First-person shooter, that is. Yeah, well... Yeah, I mean, obviously VR is first person. I'm just saying. Right. Um, I'm just gonna say it in a simpler terms. Uh, the gun is great. Yeah. Well, uh, like there's other games out there, uh, like on Vive and um, Oculus that are gun games. But this one, you kind of freely move around, and you can kind of walk around. So most other games, you're kind of standing in one space. You can teleport around. But this is the first one. I feel like I'm actually in a, playing a normal video game. It kind of like yeah. pr- has a progression system of a normal video game, which I think is really cool. So yeah. right now, I think this is one of the be- better um, shooter games in VR, at least right now. Yeah, and the game uh, follows kind of you know what we were talking about earlier about like you know guns and all that stuff. It follows the idea of you don't really have ammo in this game; you're just recharging your gun. Um, well, except for certain guns like the shotgun but besides oh, yeah. that yeah the, it's all rechargeable yeah. and the secondary weapons usually don't have a some secondaries don't have a um recharge they're just limited ammo because they're so powerful right but um and you don't have health your health is unlimited and it's basically it's not unlimited it's lim- it has a recharge time it's not like you have bars or anything um so it's kind of like halo in that fact too um but it's really fun we didn't talk really go into detail on the modes. So the story mode, two two main characters that you're kind of kind of trying to catch up with, mm-hmm. and it's kind of boring. And you have tons of cutscenes that you can't skip. Ugh. That's my main complaint about the game. Ugh. Tutorial is super long. Ugh. Cutscenes you can't skip at all. Ugh. It was a pain in the butt. Disgusting. At least not the the beginning ones. I think That's some of you can skip. But the beginning ones, you can't go past. Especially at that all. first part where it's like a goddamn, you just gotta walk. Yeah, and that's it. It's and you're like, just looking you at stuff, like shoot yeah. mushrooms. It's it's it was. I think it was just to get you used to the mode. But I think they kind of put their idea. They should have put practice targets jumping up so you can get at least you know. They could have did that. That would have been nice, like a tutorial, like dummy shot. Hey, why not try out shooting targets? At, shooting at targets or you're in like while you walk around, like you're in basic training or something like that. That would have been fun. Yeah, um, and then there's another mode, which is co-op, 
I think those are the only two modes that they have, at least that's as far as I saw. I didn't see like a time trial or anything like that. Um, I think it would be hard because he gets sick. And then the co-op, I think it's maximum two players. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure because there's a their little lobby system that they have wearing a little space station. There's only two little desks there, one for player one, one for player two. And while the map is loading, you can uh, basically play around and break things. Yeah, you can push things around and kind of goof around with the other person that you're loading the map with, which is kind of cool. We did have a weird mo- moment when we were playing together where I was trying to join your room, but some random guy kept getting in. Yeah, I don't. they don't really give easy UI for kind of choosing if it's going to be private, public, or anything. They just make it so you can invite people. With, but while you're inviting people, people can join you. So that kind of makes it annoying. Um, but it's kind of cool that you have that little lobby. And then the actual game, the co-op modes, you have three maps. You can choose random and the three ma- different maps, and this seems like it's basically like a horde mode with three different different sections. And once you finish it, it actually ends not unlike a horde mode. Once you actually finish it, um, you yeah, compare your score to other people. There's a scoreboard, so and there's not much replayability to it, but yeah, it's enough to enjoy like every now and then casually with friends. I think. Yeah, but it, uh, if you want like a first person shooter, and one thing I was gonna have, you know you want to try it out with a friend in VR mode, it's actually cool that you can do that. It's cool that they allowed that feature because it really changes the ability of, you know, the VR headset. It makes it into a more playable game. Right. Uh, um, one thing I was going to ask, some hard questions for you guys here. Um, do you think... Uh, do you think that we will get a Call of Duty Halo or GoldenEye or even a Counter-Strike in VR? I hope they give it us a golden eye. Oh my god! I, I would love a Halo. I, don't know. I would love a Halo. Counter, uh, Call of Duty, maybe. I think they need to wait to see if a golden other eye games. would be awesome. Yeah, remember Goldeneye that Nintendo sixty four golden eye? If oh it works with other games, and then maybe. Yeah, I think that it, it does open a door for it. I mean, if you can, if you notice the graphics, you can probably put together a Call, uh, Call of Duty version of this, but. You're going to get a lot of people getting sick because Call of Duty moves kind of quickly compared to this game. Right. Um, but GoldenEye would totally GoldenEye would the best. Uh, um, it was just like this. Yeah, GoldenEye Except it was with a controller. But uh, you can get a... Do you think they're going to make it like a trip, a uh, really high-end version? Well, right now, Hale, um, VR is in its infancy still. I mean, it's not in its, you know, top I think levels. the fact they have this aim controller is going to really help with bringing more games like this, which is kind of cool. Yeah. At least I hope so. I was saying when we were playing it earlier, when you're in one of those unskippable cutscenes and you're in a starship, that you have a little joystick in front of you, and you could actually reuse this controller as a joystick if you really wanted. So, like, you move from shooting in a, in a, in a little cockpit to actually aiming a gun. I think that would be a possibility of something they can do in the future. Yeah. The move controller could be very versatile if you want to change its position. I hope they also make a small, like, handgun version. That'd be cool, too. Like, a hand, like instead of, like, a whole well, size? For th- for that... Like, a one-handed... They, I think you can just use the regular move controllers, and they're not... No, but it's it'd not be really cool if it's shaped like the gun, like, like this is. I know. Like, but imagine the same thing, right, how it is, but with, like, the little loop. Like, a, literally a smaller version. So you could feel like you're holding like a gun with a trigger and everything. That could be cool. Uh, it maybe it, it could be more like uh you know like a lights like, a like a the light thing sensor. is it yeah you're right is it really is it really going to be worth the price wow. right now the only mo- the only like motion controller and then you can like whip different controllers up right the only motion control that kind of feels like that <laughs> is yeah, the more. Oculus controller I mean so he'll try that out it feels a lot more like a like a gun that you'd be holding right right it actually feels like a. It feels like a gun, uh, like a little gun, but it doesn't have lights on it. Uh, but it does feel... Actually, I like the that controller a lot. Uh, it feels right. Yeah. The Oculus it's, one. It's definitely the highest quality controller. The problem is the tracking system is not as good as Vive. Vive is like really long and awkward, a lot like the Move controller. Right. But I, I do think the uh, the game is fun. Uh, move controller works. The aim controller works really good. Uh, I just want to know if you guys think that it can be an opening for bigger AAA titles. So another question for you, uh, especially as the te- technology advances, it will be. Is Farpoint the VR shooter you wanted? That's a hard question. Yeah. Okay. That's an easy answer for you, William. <laughs> <laughs> it is not the VR shooter, shooter I wanted, Typical but it's William. getting there. It's getting there. Typical William. It's getting there. The pro- the pro- my problem with it is how linear it Big is. Big ass Like back and forth kind of a thing. Well, but. it's easier than going all, the way, all over the place. The story's crap. 
<laughs> but yeah. I mean, it is what it is. I think they're just this is like a big giant demo. I, I, that's what I think of it. Yeah, I mean, that's what a lot of people are saying about all VR games, though. It's like a big giant demo. Well, that's all you can do about it because I mean, all the games are in tested waters, right? It's yeah. again, it's it's an inf- infancy. I mean, that's what you could say about like the NES t- uh, or Atari for that matter. I mean, until like, they can figure out how you don't get sick, this is what it's going to be like. Well, you, everyone's going to. It's na- human nature to get. I mean, to well, like I said, body. until they can find another solution. I mean, there was a point where we we're like, man, I wish I could look into you know something like VR, and now we have it. It's all about like growing up with body to- body toler- body tolerances. Like I remember when I was playing Nintendo sixty four Shadows of the Empire at my grandparents' house, and they looked at the screens like, oh, I'm getting dizzy just watching watching you move around, you know. So they're getting dizzy just watching that screen move around in a circle because it's 3D space. What are the future generations that grow up with VR going to feel like compared to what we feel like? Yeah. Ellie, what do you think? It seems like it's an arcade game. So you think that you can improve it then? Maybe. It could be approved upon. I don't know. I just feel like, I don't know, based off of what I've seen, I I haven't played it. Um, intensely yet but it seems like a more advanced version of like one of those shooters arcade games it it does feel like they took some of the technology that they tested out in the VR Worlds game with the pistol that you get um, with that London Heist game and uh, they in, improved upon it quite a bit because I felt like it didn't feel so awkward to the, with a floating hand uh, they made your arm actually, and they made two arms, and they kind of work together. Yeah, your arm does weird crap, but it works. Um, for me, this is not this is not the shooter. I th- I know this is a test, but it is a good starting point. Starting point. If you get more games like this, yeah. If you get more games like this, and you can build upon it, maybe make the story a little less, you know, obvious. <laughs> It's something that you see coming. I don't um, think they really focus on the story. It was more of just, yeah, like, here's your gun, shoot at the shit. What I think that the people at um, the studio actually focused on here is to make the aim controller really good, make the game uh, playable, obviously, but also um, work out this technology to make it work. <laughs> That's weird. Uh, my arm came atta- detached. So I, did, so. I did have to kind of arrange my setup to be able to play the controller with the controller, and like you need quite a bit of space. Um, but at the same time, you can't be too far. It's kind of picky in that, the distance you need to be. Um, and it can be a little wonky. But if you set everything up well, I mean, for the most part, except for when the gun suddenly doesn't work correctly, um, it plays very well. Yeah, I, I took off my uh, VR headset and I went and I became like a super short guy. Then I took it off. I put it up um, somewhere else and I became really Yeah, so Hill took his headset off and he fell into the floor. There was like a little blob on the floor. <laughs> I don't know. It might show it a little bit earlier, a little bit later, because we're in the lobby right now. I'm kind of missing around, but um. <laughs> hitting stuff. <laughs> yeah, because that's what you were supposed to. You, that's what the lobby's all about. It, load times are astronomically long. Yeah, for the co-op levels, yeah. it's kind of ridiculous. But uh, I, I assume it's because they're trying to build the not build the stages, but I think it has a lot to do with making a stable room. Um, but the game is fun, and for what I played of it. Um, Rating wise, I think once the price goes down, yeah, more people will play it. It'll be a lot more common that people are playing it, even more so than like this is a lot more fun to play with other people than Eagle Flight. Yeah, Eagle a Flight more was in- oh interactive. I loved Eagle Flight, and you actually yeah right <laughs> got ma- match made with people, but despite us not wanting it, <laughs> we got yeah. match made with people, so people are actively playing it right now, um, and it's sold out. I'm on Amazon. Not the game, but the aim, the bundle with the aim controller and the aim controller itself. I don't know if that's the case at other stores because Amazon always sells really out really quickly. But as a sign, it's doing fairly well. Yeah, it's, it's probably because maybe they didn't make a whole bunch because of they're afraid. But I think it sold on Amazon. I think there's still some at some other retailers. Check our YouTube video for a link below for um, the aim controller and the bundle on Amazon. But at least they didn't overshoot it. Yeah, they didn't overshoot it, and they didn't. Well, we, and it's failing. We haven't. <laughs> we still haven't got any hard numbers yet, and to see how how well it's selling. But once we get those numbers, we'll uh, you know make sure we get everybody know. Um, but anyway, um, what would you rate it from? Let's go, William, from ten. Even though it's still give it some grace because it's not. It's uncharted territories really for a first person shooter, and it has co op and all that stuff. What would you rate it? 
I would give it a five out of ten. Out of ten. But since it has the co op mode, it's so kind of saving grace for it. Okay. Um, so I would say seven. Seven out of ten. Because the co op mode is really fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. And Tommy thinks my rating is really funny. <laughs> it's just you're like yeah I would give it a five and then she just like kind of snapped the way she's like god damn that's low <laughs> <laughs> well I had my reason because the cut uh, scenes you can't skip story's terrible it's really cool that I can shoot things but if they didn't have a co-op mode I actually would not care about the single pair campaign I would just think oh this is cool that I shoot this gun but if I can, since I can play so hill and we can play around mess around with other people and the point it's a lot is, more fun. The point system makes it fun too. Like if you're playing online with your friends. Yeah, we saw one of our friends' scores on there. We're like, oh, we got at least got to beat him yeah, before we, we're done for the day. Yeah, we can at least beat his score, and then uh, that's what we did, and we we moved on. But um, and le- I'm just gonna go ahead and give my score. I'm gonna give it a, like a seven point five out of ten. Uh, the reason why seven point five is just because the game is good. It's fun. Um. But there's nothing that makes me want to play the single player all in one sitting. I I agree. Yeah. So and it also has the weakness that VR does where this game, especially because you're moving around a lot more and holding like a larger controller in your hand where you'll get VR fatigue. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like a sweaty head. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I felt exactly what you're Bat- saying. Batman Arkham VR. I mean... I did not experience that fatigue very much. I mean, I was playing for like that game for like an hour max, but for this game, I play for an hour. My my head's all sweaty. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, it, I I think it's uh, that's just a common thing with VR headsets because it's it it kind of like lack keeps your air flow on your face going. It keeps it from happening, and you also move around in this game because you're like, okay, shit, someone's coming at my face, so I'm moving around. You kind of get a little bit, you know, at body has some reactions to it. Uh, I sweat a little bit on it. I had to take off the headset, I think, once or twice when I was playing single player because I was either, su- not because I was sweating too much, but my eyes kept, like, focusing, and then... Um, you at, stopped blinking. Yeah, I stopped blinking. I focusing, and then also trying to, you know, um, focus at different levels or different areas. And so then you my were eyes focusing? Started burn- no, focusing, but at... I feel like it's called co- eyes are converging and also focusing. So I was looking at so the same spot. So you're focusing, me. Yeah. Okay. What are you saying? Um, but it would cause me to get my eyes to strain. I was like, I gotta take. Well, these how hard off. were you? Well, how hard were you focusing on it? Uh, obviously, I don't want to die, so I was focusing as much as I can. So it's lots of focus. Yeah, a lot of focus, but also the sweating doesn't help. So it was just something that happened. So you just focus yourself to a sweat. Okay. So what did you what did you rate it? Uh, I said seven point five. Seven point five, a little bit higher than me. So <laughs> I guess that's still about a seven. All right. Let's hear what seven point two five. Well, Tom, I give it a five. Okay. Same as well. Same problems. Same issues. But you haven't tried co-op. Yeah, but it's the same shit. It's not the same. No, same shit, it? except somebody's next to, to me. Co-op is co-op. <laughs> it's <laughs> not the same. I'm shit. gonna tell you right now. Same shit, but somebody's next the, to me. The co-op That's actually it. felt really fun because uh, the fun part about it is that I would be standing in one corner and be like, "Well, check your right," and there'd be like four guys. And then like I, I said, well. same shit, someone's there. Well, that's like saying, okay, For Honor, single player campaign, same thing as multiplayer, except other people playing with you. That's like very yeah, generalizing same, everything. Same shit, yeah. That's no. generalizing everything. <laughs> Honestly, How it is, man. That's why it's called nah. co-op. It's called yeah. sharing the same game. Super Mario Brothers, where you hit that punching bag, playing with other people, same thing. You just other people next to you. Yeah. Like, what? It's like playing super. It's like playing gameplay mechanics. It's like playing Mario Kart I, I, with friends. I, I it's don't, the same I shit. Don't, I don't except with other people. I don't want to be mean or anything, but I don't think you you have you have to try it out before you say anything. I yeah. did try it out. I played Not a little bit of it. Not the co-op. What we played in PSX is enough for me to understand that this game uh, sucks when it comes to load screens. Uh, it decalibrates really quickly. It's it cool that it, yeah, it just shoots really nicely. I like that. <laughs> uh, other than that, I hate spiders. So for that reason alone, I give it a four out of ten. Well, you said five. He's gonna keep going lower because <laughs> you're talking about it. it. Sounds like Tom, Tommy just digged out of his ass for all the stuff he just said. Tommy doesn't count. <laughs> all right, I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> Ellie, go ahead. I, I have. I don't think I can read it. Well, that's yeah, a responsible Ellie. adult answer. Yes, thank so you. So 7.5 and a five, 7, so we're going to just gonna ignore my ignore vote. Tommy's. Uh, so we'll just say it's a 7.25. You got them dictator over here. <laughs> so it's not a dictator. You need to You're try a dictator. it. Dictator. I did try it. The co op. I don't need to just you, you would, you, I, Honestly, you would like it if you played with me because the amount of yelling that was happening at times was really fun. 
So, so yeah, that's because you like yelling at people. I didn't yell at uh, him. No, we were just, he was yelling like, "Oh my God, there's rockets coming!" And then I was like, "What rockets?" And I'll go on. I get hit twice in the face. <laughs> <laughs> what rockets? I don't and then, I, then we have to revive each other. Yeah, and that's fun. Or you could say I'm down. See, so here I'm down. Like, I don't. I don't know. I think if I died. After yeah, that. I think we both died of rockets. Mission failed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, that was a difficult spot, but it, it's really fun. And uh, seven point seven point two five is not bad for this game. It, it lacks in the little stuff. Um, they got really high end voice actors for this game. Uh, yeah, from what they I get saw. aliens. I don't understand. Like, did they get a real alien to do the alien? Voice? Yes, yes, they did. <laughs> no, I think way. Alien Gonzalez did it. Oh, <laughs> I alien know that Gonzalez. kid. It's a joke. It was a joke. I know that kid though. Do you know him? Yeah. Like in real life? Like he lives next to a planet, next to mine. Okay. Topic two of the week: Alien Covenant. Ooh, you like that? Snack that guy. <laughs> So Ellie and I watched Alien Covenant. Sorry. No, it's wrong movie. Which Groot is not a part of. That's Guardians of the Galaxy. And um, how bad was this movie? This this movie has kind of an interesting history. It was originally going to be named Prometheus 2. Yes. Then that changed to Alien something. And then to Alien Covenant. So Like witches. So they kind of had like an identity issue, crisis or issue with this movie. Yeah. And it's directed by Ridley Scott again. So that's why they named it Prometheus 2. And I'm going to say it right now. I'm tar- starting to question Ridley Scott's ability to direct movies because... How old is he? This movie is worse than Prometheus. How old is Ridley Scott? I'm not sure. If he's Dude, I, I, I was really excited. This, I knew this movie was going to be shit. If he's hitting 60, the moment I noticed it that all it is it is about aliens attacking people. That's it. That's all it was. Oh, I was it's really, fun. really excited when I heard about Prometheus and that it was Ridley Scott. I was like, oh my God, I said Alien. He's hitting he directed 60. the original Alien, and that's one of my favorite movies of all, t- all time. You and he what? is 79 right now. He is an out. You want to know? <laughs> you want to know why this movie sucks? Because they don't have no predator in it. That's okay, true. those aren't even part of the alien universe <laughs> in like the real world. <laughs> that was like one. Of, that was like one of the offshoot movies they made for money, <laughs> and it was the best ones. Okay, that was a fun movie. That was great. Okay, you know what's a really fun movie? RoboCop vs. Terminator, which never actually came out as a movie. So right. we're not going to go into direct what? We're not going to go into direct spoilers. Um, well, we're not going to go into like real spoiler, big spoilers. It sucks. We're not going to go into Stop. spoilers for this, spoiler. but it's Where's the it money? picks up. It, like immediately or very close to after Prometheus. Well, not immediately after, but no, close but to being years after. Later. Okay, ten years after That's Prometheus. A big difference in thirteen alien. years before Alien, I think. Oh, so this is like a prequel to this. Oh, yeah. Yes. So is so is Prometheus. I wonder it sucks. Um. So it's no predator. Then. We have a follow up to characters from Prometheus. Two characters. Um. Oh, that's gross. And there's a lot of new characters from the previous movie as oh, well. Oh uh, You need to stop. So the new characters, um, Ellie. What do you think of the new characters? They're all stupid. <laughs> <laughs> weren't, but weren't it, weren't most people? On they the ca- they kind of meet a lot of the stereotypes that a lot of the previous characters did, especially with the last movie, Prometheus. Most characters in the alien movies are dumb, except for one person. But they're supposed to be smart. And in this movie, yeah, they she does have a point because these are all people who are like in space with space. They, they should be some point in this movie, the Covenant is the name of the ship that they're traveling in space on and it's a colony ship it's full of witches so it's full of people in hibernation and they even have little embryos of human beings which is interesting and um to grow them well yeah in the soil not Mm. in the soil soil is it for like a like a like a little pod right to grow humans in well, no, it's like they're little embryos, and they sit in this little thing in cold storage, which is interesting. Oh, so they're like someone can be impregnated later. No, it's they're like actual they humans. They just need to grow them larger. And I guess they'd do that in a test tube. But all right, um, Michael Fassbender is in this movie, mm-hmm. and he's walking around the Covenant ship, kind of tending to everything, just like he was in Prometheus. I like that intro with him because it it reminded me of two thousand one Space Odyssey. For yeah, a so there's a lot. Of oh, Michael American. Fassbender in this movie. There's two Michael Fassbenders. I don't like that. Oh. So there's the old android Michael Fassbender, and there's the new android Michael, Michael Fassbender. Which looks like not the new. new and Michael I mean, Fassbender. if you just want, want, want to watch this for Michael Fassbender, that's fine. I, I thought he did a good job in this movie. It was just entertaining watching him. He was, he wasn't a, he was pretty weird in the last movie too. Yeah. Previous. 
but because it was a uh, the covenant was a colony ship you end up with a lot of pair couples in this and they don't really make you develop the characters enough for you to really care about them and you kind of end up with a lot of the, tr- or, the or know who's screwing who or know who's like screwing who yeah it kind of felt like you're watching a what is it called big brother but kind you didn't really care about anybody kind of in, in space mm. it was it was I wanted to like this movie, but what made me really not like this movie is not the characters, because, I mean, they started to grow on me a little bit after some people died, because I was like, okay, I don't care about these guys, but the people that you do stick with by the near the end of the movie, you start to care about a little bit. Um, what made me not like it is there's a new alien type in this, which is kind of very similar in, to the alien that you get towards the end of Prometheus. And they are airborne. You kind of see it in the trailer that they're going into the nasals, passages of people, and like into. I don't remember what the first one was. It just like went. Oh, it went into the ear. Yeah. And then um, it grows inside their body, and then comes through the back. They call it like a backburster. Okay. Um, and they that's a different kind of alien than the xenomorph, but we do get the xenomorph in this, and I'm not going to spoil anything, but it was very disappointing the way that we got to see it. If you're uh, as big a fan of the original alien as I am, you're going to have a lot of questions leaving the movie theater as to how the hell we ended up with what we did in alien one. Cause it didn't make any sense. They, I mean, there's, there's supposed to be another movie that will kind of lead up to alien after this, but I don't, I hope it doesn't happen. I hope we can just get, forget about this movie as far as the way the aliens were created. Cause this, this is this dumb. was not an alien movie. What was it? It was a waste witch of movie. money. Waste of witch. money. Okay, it was a big was waste. It was Michael money. Fassbender movie. Yeah, like he could have <laughs> been the witch. What are you talking about, witch? Like it's a coven. Like that's the name of the colony ship. I know, but we're not talking about the name alone. I know, but it reminded me of witches. Like you know, I know a little bit. A yeah, scene of just the, over that's the, the name. Planet they land. Get on. over the name and so let's talk about the no, movie. No, the, the scene with the, or the planet where they land. Uh, Is there um, some kind of cocaine that you're on that I want to be on? <laughs> 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 Is there some sort of cocaine? So Ellie, besides be Michael Fassbender, what would you say was your favorite character in this movie? I like movie. Rock Number Two. The Rock Number Two. Rock Number Two. I don't know who that is. It showed up in scene three. What? About 38 minutes in. The Rockin'? There's a rock. Ellie, that's not a, a character. <laughs> it had more characters than some so, of them. So the lady, oh, I see what you're saying. So the lady was, <laughs> the lady from uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Him, that weird lady that follows the, she's in this. How did she oh, do? Oh, I didn't even notice. Is, is, what the main is that one the s- small looking one with black hair? Yeah, short yeah, hair. I, I would say that. She kind of grew on me towards the end because mm-hmm. she uh, gets more of a big role in the movie. So she's probably like the second biggest role next to Michael Fassbender in this movie. She annoyed me. Um, towards the end, I mean, you, you get to know her and like her struggles. And what was her husband? Husband the, who was originally uh, the captain James of the ship? James Franco. James Franco was in this movie for five seconds. <laughs> he dies oh, really? right away. <laughs> he, he dies right away. So why is he even in this movie? Say, I think he knew it was going to be lame, so he's like, kill me. Just kill me in the beginning. <laughs> that would be yeah. really funny if... Uh, <laughs> I think the name is Catherine Waterston. So that's the actress's name. But right. I think she... Uh, there she is. Um, scared and crying. Just like everyone in the Alien movies. So I think uh, it's interesting that they actually put him in this movie, which is great, uh, just to kill him off in like a second. Um, but... You know, the alien movies, did they have... In the trailer, you get to see xenomorphs. Did the xenomorphs fit the way you want to see xenomorphs? No. That's, like, the most disappointing part of this movie. Did the xenomorph pull its face back and reveal Johnny Depp? No, it didn't, uh, actually. I, would have, no. I wouldn't have been surprised if it did. So, I'm a huge Alien fan. Um, alien I is like one of my it. favorite movies of all time. Yeah. So, Alien 1... I would say it was still my most favorite Alien movie. Okay. Aliens, which is a sequel to that, <laughs> is my second most favorite Alien movie. Alien 3, I think, kind of fits to number three of my Alien movies. No, which favorite was my favorite movie? What? Prometheus. Really? Number no, one? fuck no. Oh, well, that's my next one. Number four out of the Alien movies number is Prometheus seven. for me. 
There's not seven. Would exactly. you really calm down? Okay, so Alien Five, it uh, the number number five movie for me is Alien Resurrection. Do you remember that one? Hardly. That's the one where um where the um Ridley comes, comes back to life. Ridley is Rid Ridley is cloned, and she retains some of the cells of the alien. And she's all psycho. And she plays basketball and is able to make hoops behind her back. And she's like, I'm the mother. Yeah. So that one, and then they make, they give birth to like some sort of weird human slash alien. It's kind of weird. And she's like, my baby. Yeah. My two That one I rate higher than this movie, yeah. Alien Covenant. So That's Alien Covenant true. is number six yeah, for me. Yeah, that one was so much better. Would you agree with so my, my listing? Yeah, I do. I completely agree. Okay. So if you're a huge fan of Alien and you don't mind kind of wasting your money on something that you're not going to totally enjoy um you i can mean okay, go ahead and okay, see okay, it okay but okay so as alien fans i think the story was horrible they shouldn't have called it alien they shouldn't have the name alien on it i don't know if ridley scott is just capable of making like great looking movie because prometheus looked amazing can i, can I finish? this movie looked amazing yeah go ahead yes that's where i was going oh sorry i got excited and kind of want to okay go ahead story is horrible if you're an alien fan if you want to watch a movie that's pretty it is a pretty movie it got, it took me out of my um, like it, it made me think a little in my imagination world and to see where this was going it was this appointment where everything was going because they explained it kind of what was going on but it, it was explained stupidly <laughs> and i don't know i think i i should have left it in my imagination so I think it could have been, uh, from what I'm seeing in the trailers, I think they could have expanded on this story to be really, really cool. They could have. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, they could have, like, said, you know what? We're going to explain the birth of the xenomorphs uh, to the point where it's, like, makes sense. And The problem is, if they focused on that, it would have been much better. But there was a big focus on something else. I, I, I can't go into, sp into yeah, spoilers. Yeah, we're not going to. Yeah, there was more focus on something else than the but actual But like I said, aliens. the reason behind the explanation of the Xenomorphs is part of what I hate, absolutely hate about this movie. Well, it's something that we can't talk about. But so, what's your ratings? You too. Oh, God. 6.5. What? Oh, wow, that's high. Six? Yeah. Well, that's her rating, 6.5. Wow. 7 would be, I wouldn't mind watching again. 6.5 means I probably won't watch it again in the theater, but I might watch it again for my imagination's sake. If I don't have to pay for it, I might exactly. watch it again. Exactly, yeah. That's, I'm not going to pay full means. attention, <laughs> but I'd watch like certain scenes again because, like I said, like we said, it looks great. And that was like the main strength but of Prometheus. But you know what was mind-blowing? It, it's, it's, it's rated fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, well, people that aren't Rotten Tomatoes don't always have the greatest. No. Well, I'm probably it's really. Three barely made it. I'm probably really biased because I really love Alien and Aliens, the first two. So he does love Aliens. Yeah. So I would give it a three. Oh, a wow. three and a six point five. Wow. So that's like what a three point two five. Three. You hated it that much? It's like it's like what was that horrible movie we watched? Well, no, look, the Resident what, Evil, like triple X status. R like Resident Evil. Resident when I was Evil a status? when I was a kid, first seeing the Xenomorphs, how they hatch out of the eggs and the face huggers and the mythos behind that it was so amazing. Like there was, there was, um, I guess what they call them engineers in the last one. Uh, There's called space jockeys from what I remember back then, mm -hmm. and it had a hole burst in his chest. That kind of represents okay. He kind of picked up these eggs. Who knows where he got them from? And it went into his head. And then he gave birth to one of the aliens. And that same thing is happening to these people. So that mystery behind it is kind of what made it so cool and fascinating to me. That's kind of ruined that bit by this movie. I want a Predators only movie. They already had a bunch. Watch them. Okay. Those movies are <laughs> terrible. <laughs> I know. Those, those are worse than this movie. I need them to remake it. I mean, um, the game is great. Alien vs. Predator game. Just wanted I know. A, that was a, great. They just wanted an explanation to, you know. Yeah, I know, but Something. it goes into the, if I could compare how the Xenomorphs is ruined by this movie to anything else, it'd be Star Wars and the prequels. So overall, <laughs> what you're trying to say is this movie suck, don't waste your money, moving on. No, I wouldn't say that. I would say that. 
I just say if you're an alien fan, it's disappointing. If you're a visual person, it's beautiful. And if you just want to watch a movie about aliens, kind of, but it's kind of like a wannabe horror movie, but then it's a sci-fi horror movie, but not really, then go ahead and try it if you're curious for summer. I would still go see it, the dollar but I'm a huge theory. alien fan, so... I'd, I'd like to watch the first one again. Viewer beware. But yes, I want to watch the first one again. I don't want to play Alien Isolation, the video game, in, v- in VR. So the Please. final rating for this movie was a 3.25 by our two people that watched the movie. That's uh, interesting. That, that can be beware. Average. 6.5. Garbage rating. And a garbage movie. Moving on. And now listener confessions. All right. We had a listener confession. It actually came in via WordPress, which is also uh, where we have our site. So at nerdconfessions.net. I also, it's from Keith Kenny wrote via WordPress. I also enjoy JK work, JK's work. JK Rowling. Yeah, JK Rowling. I think that's the f- short for her name. For her craft and imagination. She has an excellent mastery of the young adult fantasy and the market's longing for wish fulfillment. I.e., we're really not what we seem. We have a magical powers. In fact, we all do. If we just can find the right field to apply them, ooh. So it's a really deep kind of conversation piece. But what's your um, magic power, so he'll If I oh, I, I think I it's it. your bobblehead speech. Speech. <laughs> I wish I had better magic power than speech, but I uh, think that if I had a magic power, if I could have a magic power, it would be to be invisible. That is my. Me thing. too. I have a magic power, which is the power to be incredibly comfortable. Yes, I agree. <laughs> oh, wow. I actually take it back. The, the power, power to just die and maybe come back to life. So, like a phoenix rising sun thing? You know, every story of, story of immortality, the person eventually regrets it. Yeah, they always do, because they get bored. I mean, it's not They get to see everybody. Like, imagine if you couldn't ever die and, like, the whole planet explodes and you're just, fun, like, floating in space, bored out of your mind. And because... You, you can't die and you're floating there's no gravity you can't no, really I do mean, anything like, so you're just floating no, for all eternity in immortal. darkness I oh. just I just want to have the ability to like be dead and then uh, if you don't I need to have fl- that I and then if I come <laughs> if I feel like it, it's like oh yeah I forgot it's to turn like off a the, swinging door I, I forgot you can just to walk turn off the oven you can't just be like yeah I'm gonna die right now and come back in the 60s no you, you can't can. I can like 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 I can go into hypersleep I, I, I think uh, powers are that power is always regrettable. I would say right now the best power to have is the ability to teleport. That's cool. Because you can go anywhere. You wanna go see China right now? Bam, we're in China. You wanna go see France? Bam, we're in France. You wanna go to Soil's house? Bam, we're in Soil's house. Instant. You wanna get to work? Don't don't teleport in my house. You but don't know what you're gonna once see. Once you teleport <laughs> once you teleport to the next place, are you the same person? Yes. yes. A lot of people there's <laughs> actually there's actually a theory out there that says that if you're teleporting like like uh, there's the no theory it's bullshit because no one can teleport wow. yet you're such a dick so Garbage. what i was hearing is that there's a teleportation theory through star trek that the person that teleports through the teleporter because you're being recreated what is you get this not from the same data that's not the same person that left that person's actually killed on the transport and the new person is made and that person is you still and the memories are still there but how do you know that all those memories are still intact that's crazy how do you know, wait? So if that happens, can they actually get rid of the cancer and shit? And yeah, we can. Teleporters taller? can. Yeah, they make it taller and stuff. And teleporters, change they said, they can change everything you yeah, want. Like I don't want that cancer. Let's leave it behind. Just take it out. That's what the, I think. That's what the lungs they, suck. Replace them with some good ones. I'm I think that's for the main. Re- that's what they were talking about. Like if they, like is, is it Elon Musk making some shit like that? Right, I heard he was working enough, on enough some talking about Elon Musk. All right, so uh, I believe J.K. Rowling is a awesome treasure, and she makes great pieces of work. Um, she also writes great books that are not she's about great, fantasy. She's a good world builder. And more, um, they're more serious adult books that she wrote under a pseudonym. Um, but I think she's, I think she's a great, a great writer. And, uh, if you haven't had a chance, read Harry Potter and her other works. My magic power would be to become a spy, cyborg. You can do that's that without not a, that's, power. Not a, that's not a magic power. It's a magic you power. are already a cyborg. <laughs> you have Wouldn't you want to be, uh, in the alien movie? I am oh, alien. that's not a power. Cyborg. Well, that wraps up this week's confession. Join us next week for more discussions and opinions that pique our interest. If you have any confessions you would like to discuss, feel this free to send it our way. As always, we want to thank all our listeners and followers for tuning in and supporting us. Share us, like us, review us, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Whatever you do, every bit helps us grow. And don't forget to find our previous episodes and bonus content on nerdconfessions.net. 
and you can find us on YouTube under Nerd Confessions. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, and the little bell will remind you when we put up videos. This is Nerd Confessions, signing off. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. <laughs> By the way, don't go watch Alien. It's really no, bad movie. You Good luck watch if you it see if you it. have spare money. It is an absolutely garbage movie. Don't do it. Just sneak into the... Well, you know what you should room. do is save your money and go see the new Pirates of the Caribbean coming out this week. Yes. Now that... That's a smart decision. Tommy's going to host the next episode with pirates. I'm going to fill it up with you, with a bunch of rum and yo-hos. What? Yo. But view VR lovers. Yo-ho. Star Trek <laughs> VR is coming up. Star Trek VR. Bridge crew. Can you imagine a VR on a ship? That's like, what it's going to be. It's going to be nuts. You're going to be punching on consoles. Still and I are going to play it. And we'll see how it goes. Game over, man. Game over. <laughs>